Hello everyone, this is Venom, and we are here with another build for Prismatic. Today we're going with the Prismatic Titan build. Now, again, we are build crafting right now because we already know what all the aspects and fragments are going to be that are going to be released to us. We know, for the most part, 99% what all of them do. The only thing we can't do right now is test them. But before we get into too deep of build crafting, I want to show you guys what the builds are you're going to be able to use as soon as Final Shade comes out. Now, of course, when we're doing these build videos, we do have a few rules, but I do have to remind you a few things that Bungie has mentioned already, and that is mainly the elemental restrictions being lifted for Prismatic. That's going to be very important for the builds we're going to be using. So, coming from the dev post itself, it says, Aspects that were damage type specific have had the requirements loosened when using Prismatic. For example, Diamond Lance and Feed the Void activate from any defeats of any damage type, not just Stasis and Void. And Stylus Executioner activates when defeating an enemy afflicted with any other middle debuff, not just Void. That means that any kind of ability that activates off of a specific type is going to activate off of any type now instead. That's going to be very important when we go over today's build. And finally, again, I want to remind us that Bungie has gone through and they have showed us what our starting abilities are going to be. Now, for the most part, we're going to be, we're going to have about, we're going to have two choices for most of our abilities. The class abilities and the movement, we're going to have three. But for the aspects, we've only got two starting aspects. So those are going to be set. We will be able to choose our super, our melee, and our grenade along with our class ability and our movement. So those are going to be good. It's just our aspects that are going to be locked. We will not have a choice in that. So for the, or for the Titan, we were going to start off with the knockout. It's going to be an arc, uh, an arc aspect. We're going to start off with Knockout and Diamond Lance, which is a stasis aspect. For our grenade, we're going to be using the Shackle Grenade because, come on, Shackle Grenade is the best grenade. We're going to be using the Frenzied Blade for the melee. As far as your movement, you're going to use whatever lift you want to use. As far as the barricade, you're going to go ahead and use whichever barricade you want to use. But as far as our super, it's going to depend on whether or not you're doing an, a boss damage build or you're doing an ad clear build. I'm going to go ahead and go off of Blade Fury. We're going to use that as our super. However, Thunder Crash is also a very powerful one. You could use either one. And if you're going through and you're killing bosses or you're doing, you know, probably doing the campaign, uh, Thunder Crash may come in handy if you come across some big baddies. It's going to depend. But for today's build, we're going to be going over Blade Fury. Alright, so starting off with the Diamond Lance aspect. Again, that's going to be a stasis aspect. It says, shatter or defeat uh, targets with stasis abilities or weapons to create a stasis lance. However, of course, we just went over this, Bungie updated it. Basically, getting any ability kills is going to trigger this. So, any ability kill is going to trigger a Diamond Lance. What does a Diamond Lance do? You can throw it to freeze targets or you can right-click it to free do a little AoE on the ground. You're going to slam it on the ground, do an AoE. But again, it's going to be any ability kill. So, any of our abilities... That are elemental or going to proc Diamond Lance. Next up, we've got the Arc Aspect Knockout. Knockout says, critically wounding a target or breaking their shield infuses your melee attacks with Arc Energy and increases your melee range and damage for a short time. Defeating targets with melee attacks, not charge melee attacks, but just melee attacks, starts health regeneration and makes you amplify it. So basically, getting an enemy, not killing them, but getting them down to critical wounded where you can finish them, is going to proc Knockout. On top of that, getting any melee kill whatsoever is going to start giving you health by, you know, regenerating your health, and it's going to make you amplify. Now, your melee attacks are going to be very, very important for this build because the exotic we're going to be using is Severance Enclosure. Now, what does Severance Enclosure do? It says, Powered Melee Funnel Blows Unleash a Damaging Explosion. Finishers and Funnel Blows against more powerful targets increase the radius and damage of the explosion. I've already made two builds with this. Using both solar and board, we're going to go ahead and use this with prismatic now because we're going to have a lot more power final blow charges. Now, if we were going to be using just a melee that only had one charge, I probably would have went with something else for the first prismatic build for this one. However, because we're going to be using a specific melee with three charges, this is going to make our sevens enclosure that much stronger. Now, you might remember as well that the builds I made before for void and for solar only really worked because for some reason, Having certain uh, perks or certain buffs on your Void and on your Solar and on your Arc would actually make your melee act like it was Powered Melee, even though it wasn't. It did not work with the Dark subclasses for that, only your Powered Melee blows then. Uh, for example, with the Void, if you had an Overshield and I think Offensive Bulwark, then your regular melees would count as a Powered Melee, and all your regular melees would just make things blow up. Same thing with your Solar. If you had on... um. Uh, Roaring Flames, then your regular melees would just cause everything to blow up. That did not work with the Dark subclasses, however. Having something like uh, Woven Mail on or did not work. It unfortunately didn't work the same way, but your Powered Melee still work. We're going to go ahead and take advantage of the Powered Melee and all the different melee buffs for this Titan using the Severance Enclosure. 
Now, I mentioned before, for grenade, we're going to be using the Shackle Grenade. That's probably one of the best grenades around the game. It's going to be very good AoE. We've got plenty of ways to damage things. We want to go ahead and be able to punch them very safely without, uh, without taking any damage. Shackle is going to be the way to go for that one. Now, for melee, of course, we have the Frenzy Blade. Uh, it's going to sever targets when you attack them. It's got very good range. It pushes you forward. And you've got three charges for this. That's going to make Severance Enclosure proc three times. You're going to have three times of practice. It's going to be very good. Now... I'm hoping that something like Woven Mail is going to work with Severance Enclosure now and actually cause your regular melee attacks to, to proc. If not, they may actually remove that and fix that all together. We're still not sure if it's Severance Enclosure, the way it works with the light subclasses, is a bug or not. They may fix it, they may not, they may make it work with Prismatic. Who knows? We will find out when, uh, when Final Shape comes out. In the meantime, though, it will definitely work with the, with the Frenzy Blade, with the Power Melee. So, we've got three melee charges. We basically got three handheld grenades on top of our regular grenades. Now, for your jump, use your zipper jump you want to. But for your class ability, I would go ahead and use the Thruster. This will let you dodge. We're going to be a very melee-centric build, and I think it's probably a good idea to go ahead and be able to dodge a bit more. Now, this will let you evade really quickly. It's going to be not quite as good as Hunter Dodge, but will help you evade a little bit, and that's going to be great with your melee. And of course, for our super, we're going to be using the Blade Fury. However, like I said, you can go ahead and use Thunder Crash if you want to for high boss damage. That's so going to be completely up to you. But keep in mind that whatever super you have is going to change what one of your fragments does. So we're going to go over fragments here momentarily. Now remember that the fragments for Prismatic are going to be different than our regular fragments. This has its own set of fragments, and we're going to be starting off with five. So those are not going to be changeable until you earn some more. I'm going to go ahead and read off those five, and then mention why your super is going to matter for one of them. All right, first off, we got the Faucet of Dawn. It says, Powered melee hits against targets make you radiant. Powered melee final blows make both you and uh, nearby allies radiant. So basically, all those bladed furies are going to make us radiant. All your melee charges is going to be, again, a very melee centric build. All these are going to make you radiant. So you're going to be radiant quite a bit or quite often with this build. Next up, we got the facet of hope. It says, while you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. When I go over mods, you're going to see exactly how often we're going to be. Uh, Next up, we got the Facet of Hope. It says, while you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. We're going to have the buffs quite often because we're going to be picking up a lot of orbs of power, and those orbs are going to give us an elemental buff. We're going to have one up pretty much at all times, hopefully. Next up, the Facet of Protection. It says, while surrounded by enemies, you are more resistant to incoming damage. It's going to be a very, very good facet to have equipped, especially because we're going to be a very melee-focused build. Next up, we got the Facet of Ruin. It says this increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target and increases the size of solar ignitions. It's going to be great because we're going to be using diamond lance and freezing a lot of enemies and then shattering them to make more lances. And that will, of course, spread out the damage and help us uh, damage more enemies and take out more. And finally, we have the facet of purpose. And this is the one where it's going to really matter what super you've got equipped because it's going to affect this facet. It says picking up an orb of power grants either amplified, restoration, frost armor, woven mill, or overshield based on the type of your equipped super. Now, since we're going to have two to start off with, we're going to have Thunder Crash, which will give you Amplified, or we're going to have the Woven Mail for the, the Strand one, depends on which one you want. If you want the extra defense, Woven Mail is the way to go. If you want to get Amplified, then Thunder Crash is going to be the way to go. Or if you don't care which one it is, just choose which super you want and forget about the buff you're going to get. But if you care about the buff, then you do have to change which super you have. Now, I don't have my stats set up on this build right now because, again, we can't actually build the build, so I haven't got my armor set for it. But for this build, we're going to want to go ahead and max out our resilience, get that up to 100, and then we're going to really worry about strength with this one because it's going to be a very melee-centric build. So go ahead and get your strength up there after that. So your resilience, then your strength. After that, then go ahead and put whatever else you got left into discipline. All right, for your helmet, you got two sets of mods you can do. You can either lean heavily into the, the melee portion of them to get your super back quicker, to do that, put on two copies of Hands-On, and of course, whatever siphon mod you want to get you some more of the power. Or you can go with the traditional Heavy Ammo Finder or a Heavy Ammo Scout. And again, if it's solo, if you're by yourself, two copies of Heavy Ammo Finder. If you're in a group, one copy of Heavy Ammo Finder and one copy of Heavy Ammo Scout. For the arms, we're going to go with Heavy Handed. We're not going to be using Firepower because we're using a Shackle Grenade. We're not really going to be getting kills with those, so it would be a waste of a, a mod slot. Instead, we're going to be using Heavy Handed. That will make uh, Powered Final Blows, or Powered Melee Final Blows, make over the power. And then our next two mods are also going to work off of Melees. we got Focusing Strike. It says Grant Class Energy when you cause damage with a Powered Melee Attack. Again, we're going to be doing this quite a bit. And then Impact Induction. Causing damage with a Powered Melee Attack reduces your grenade cooldowns. So we're going to go full melee on our arms. 
For test, I recommend having some melee damage resistance and a concussion damage resistance mods on, as well as any elemental resistance mods, depending on what it is you're doing. You're going to be very up close to enemies, so at the very least, you want to make sure you got on the melee damage resistance. Uh, after that, like I said, if you need any additional uh, ammunition, go ahead and toss on whatever reserves you want. But having on that melee damage resistance and maybe an elemental resistance, depending on the enemies you're fighting, will be a good way to go. Next up for legs, most of our kills are going to be from our melee, so we're going to be going with a copy of Recuperation to give us some health on Overpower pick uh, Pickup. And Invigoration, which is going to reduce our melee cooldown whenever we pick up Overpower. And of course an Absolution, which is going to reduce all of our cooldowns when we pick up Overpower. So we're going to really lean into the Orbs of Power and picking, up, uh, picking those up to reduce all of our cooldowns, especially our melee. Finally, for the class item, we're going to have a copy of 1-2 Finisher. It says finishers restore melee abilities and consumes three or more stacks of armor charge, granting additional energy for each charge consumed. A guaranteed way to get your, your melee back. We're going to have a copy of Proximity Ward to give you an overshield when you finish an enemy. It's going to be good for one two finisher and just in general because you're going to be very close to enemies anyway. So it's very good to have an overshield if you finish an enemy. And finally, a copy of Outreach, although we can probably swap that out with Reaper if you want to want to get more uh, Orbs of Power from your weapons. But this says reduces melee cooldown when using your class ability. So another way to get that melee redu or that melee cooldown by using your class ability, which is basically going to be a dodge in this case. That is the build. This is going to be a very, very melee-centric build, and our melees are basically going to proc a ton of stuff. Now, as far as weapons go, I'd highly suggest having weapons on that are going to be proccing different elemental debuffs. So, for example, I've got Chill Clip on with my Deliverance. So that's going to be proccing Diamond Lances and a myriad of other things. I've got on Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds. But basically, any weapon you've got that's going to be doing debuffs to your enemies is going to proc Diamond Lance. And you can pretty much go crazy from there. So it's going to be a very, very fun build to use. Your main clear item, though, is going to be your melee abilities. It's going to be those... uh those um, Frenzy Blades. Each one of those, thanks to Severance Enclosure, is basically going to clear the room. It's going to do a big AOE explosion each time you use it. So when you're using these, you don't want to just go crazy like you normally would with a Titan Melee using Frenzy Blade if you're just using the Strand subclass. Instead, you're going to use these to give like grenades. You're going to uh, aim at a group of enemies, and you're going to use one. You're going to kill that enemy with it, and it's going to explode outwards and kill everything around it. So think of these as your grenades, and then think of your Shackle Grenades as your as your AOE. So that's how this build is going to work. Of course, once you debuff enemies, basically everything is going to start proccing. You're going to have your Diamond Lance. You're going to be able to freeze groups of enemies. You will then be able to Shackle them and make more diamond lances and of course whenever you get an enemy down to critical uh critical health you will then power up your melee even if it's just a regular melee charge that would do a ton more damage to enemies and start restoring your health now as far as our exotic class item i figured out what the two what the two exotic perks i would like to see combined are and those were going to be the armamentarium which would give you an additional grenade charge and then there's going to be one from the hunter actually i'd like to see and that's going to be the, let's go over here to the 6th priority. This is gain a second dodge charge, which is basically a second class ability charge. I would like to see these two combine. This would basically give me a an additional uh, class ability, which will let me dodge again with my Titan. And this will give me an additional grenade, which will give me a second grenade. Basically, the Titan would have two class abilities, two grenades, which would be shocker grenades, and three melees. You would basically have a ton of abilities to be able to use. And I think that would be a really good setup for this build. Now, again, that would only be if uh, those would actually work together. That is, of course, speculation. And the build itself technically works off of the Severance Enclosure. So if I had to just choose one of them, I would say Severance Enclosure plus Armamentarium to give me that second grenade, and we would be good to go. So combine Severance Enclosure with Armamentarium, and we're set. That would be the, the combinations I would like to see for this particular build. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Again, this build is going to work. I cannot wait to use it. We know it's going to work because Bungie's already told us what the aspects are. They've already told us the restrictions they've looked on it. And we already know how all these other aspects of views work. So we know it's going to work together. We just got to get our hands on it on day one. That's all I cannot wait to do is actually to try out these builds. So uh, that's going to do it today. Thank you for coming by. If you like it, liked it. If you love it, sub. I'll be doing the Warlock next, uh, the starting build for it. Then after that, the gloves are off. I'm starting with the build crafting of just whatever I want to do at this point. And it is going to be... I cannot wait. So thank you all for coming by and I will see you on the next video.